Good afternoon. This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for the rant with Barbara Rose Brooker. It's been two weeks, Barbara. I miss talking to you. I miss talking to you, Karen, the, the voice of yeah. America. But you have a great guest with us today, right? Yes, yes. fabulous, fabulous guest. So tell us, oh, should I go? Should oh, I go oh, and introduce yeah. him right now? Well, first of all, I'd like to say to the listeners, wouldn't you love to have a world where everyone would have the, the confidence and the choice to walk, to stand, for all those people who are immobilized from MS to paraplegics, to all kinds of physiological horrors that happen. And wouldn't it be wonderful? Right now, it was, we always think of it as science fiction, and we have the, the, the clumsy walker where I see people on the street walking all bent forward, falling and getting stuck in potholes and so forth. Well, guess what? We have our guest today has done this and is working on it. And I'm going to pronounce his name correctly. I'm, I'm looking down at Rob Karlovich. Rob Karlovich, hello and welcome. And Rob is a mechanical engineer and an inventor. And guess what, listeners? He has invented this wonderful, wonderful, invention called the life glider that I like to call the life changer. And rather than listening to me, I'm going to go right in and ask Rob Karlovich the first question. Rob, first of all, again, welcome. And second of all, can you tell us what the life glider is and then tell us when and how you developed it. And that's what we're going to talk about. Sure, uh, I'd be, be happy to. And it's great to be here and talking about a subject that is near and dear to me. Um, uh, you know, I'm not really from this space in terms of uh, mobility, uh, but uh, I became very interested in it when I learned about the plight of some of the young people that went to war and came back with some terrible injuries. Uh, and what I saw from a program I was watching was saying that they're basically uh, going to be very limited in their opportunity for the rest of their lives. And I just thought, what a horrible situation that is, putting themselves in harm's way to do what they think is right for the country. And they come back and that's the answer we gave them. And so I... I heard that and I was kind of uh, angered by it. And this happens to be Veterans Day. So right. uh, I think it's really important to, right. to highlight that the full, the, the whole you know, uh, start of this was uh, sparked by our veterans. And uh, I was motivated to give them a better answer. And I didn't know how I was going to do that. Uh, but my engineering background allows me to kind of uh, diagnose uh, and uh, come up with solutions and then test them and make sure that they're, uh, they're actually going to work. So this whole thing started about vets, and it's still in large part about helping vets. And uh, what LifeGlider does is addresses the fundamental problems with walking. Uh, when I started to look into problems with walking, it seemed there hadn't been very much thought put into the devices that we present people. It, it seems like it started with a stick. And so we thought, well, let's put two sticks together because that's better than one stick. And then uh, someone got even a bigger idea and said, let's put four of them together. And we got, oh, we got the walker, <laughs> the standard uh, walker. That's uh, amazing. So, uh, Mark, let me yeah. ask you, when did you first start this? How long ago? And first, um, God bless the veterans. But how long ago was it? This is, I started this eight years ago, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And it took quite a while to, uh, to feel confident that I had a product that uh, addressed the needs. I went through a lot of testing and iterations. Uh, the key thing is uh, 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 
people need to feel confident on their feet. Yes. They need to lose the fear of being up and active and walking. Mm -hmm. And none of the devices that are currently available in the market, save maybe a wheelchair if that's the way you want to spend your life, uh, address the fundamental problem, fundamental problem, which is balance. So uh, this device actually solves the balance problem, uh, allows people to be up and mobile without fear of falling. And they regain confidence and they regain a lot of vitality and uh, they become who they used to be to uh, oh varying my, degrees. Oh my God, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. They become what they used to be. Can you describe for us a little bit how when you say sticks, I'm trying to picture the life glider. What do they do? Does it, does it attach to the body? Yeah, so um, I learned a lesson because my brother was a rock climber. Uh, he climbed El Capitan a couple times out here in the Yosemite uh, Valley, and he thought it would be a great idea for me to, to become a rock climber too. Of course, I'm terrified of heights, but uh, <laughs> not to shy away from something my brother wanted to do. Uh, he dragged me up these really insanely steep uh, inclines, and I'd invariably fall. And the cool thing that would happen is the, the clever harness that they, you know, they, they provide uh, catches you. It prevents you from getting injured. You're not hanging upside down. You simply restore your feet to the proper position and resume climbing. And so you lose the fear, actually, of even these incredibly uh, scary places. So what I want to do is bring that element to the walker so that we capture the center of gravity which is in the pelvis yeah. and secure that. So if somebody loses their balance or stumbles, uh, it catches them before they fall. And uh, they no longer fear uh, falling and getting injured. And uh, it's remarkable what happens when you remove fear and instill confidence. Absolutely. It does, does it require a learning curve? Uh, does it happen right away? Uh, for some people, they're much more adventurous and they're willing to accept new things, but most people require a little bit of adjustment because uh, it's, it's not like riding a bike in terms of it's going to fall over to the side or whatever, but uh, it's something I, you know, you're not accustomed to, but the uh, learning curve for most people is pretty quick. Within a, within a, a, a few minutes, they're up and walking uh, and they've lost that that fear that they're going to fall. And uh, it, it, over the coming couple of weeks, it becomes something that's quite um, a part of them. It just becomes like eyeglasses. I it wear eyeglasses like and it's normal for me now. And I know how to deal with it. Is it big? Uh, is it's it the size uh, of, a, of a, a, like a rollator walker. Uh, uh -huh. But the difference is, it surrounds you, it's not in front of you. When you, when you talk about the typical walkers, what happens is you, it's in front, of you, in front of you and then people lean over and then what they do is they take the center of gravity outside of their body. So we always want to keep the body centered over oh. the feet. And so, you, yeah. Yeah, and I love how you talk about the walker because I had knee surgery about 10 months ago and the first thing they give you is a walker. And, you know, you're right. I kept leaning forward and it kept tipping. Uh, now, yes. luckily, I had one good leg that I could balance back on. But when they taught me how to walk with it, it took me probably two, three days. And yet, I still did not feel comfortable. I, I would say it's, it's a similar acclimation process as a, as a rollator, except... Uh, you start to feel very natural with it and very comfortable. I, I'm um, just, it's like wings. It's like having wings and you can fly. You know, the metaphor of this life glider is so wonderful because you say it's in the back. So it's something that becomes part of the body. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And the, the name comes from, uh, you know, I want it to be about your life. It's about... Yeah bringing you back to life and a richness and a fullness of life. And compared to the struggles that you've had before, I want it to feel like you're gliding. 
and it's now with ease and not all this strain and struggle. Uh, it's not, it's something you're excited about doing now, getting up and walking and participating socially. Uh, Dancing, as you said, I was reading dancing and cooking and yes. life, hugging people. A life <laughs> hugging people. Hugging people. Yeah, I mean, it's remarkable. The basics of uh, feeling human uh, are deprived of many people who have struggles with walking. Oh, I know. I know many people who, who can't. So what I want to know is where is the life glider in terms of the market? Mm -hmm. Is it being um, embraced by the um, medical profession or the medical, I should say, uh, climate? Are they using it in the, are, in the hospitals? Are they teaching their patients? Yeah, yeah. well, uh, I'm an engineer and I'm very cautious. And when I uh, decided to break, uh, start this project, I was like, what? I got this insight in this. Do I really want to do this? It's kind of scary and try to tackle this problem. Uh, so I've been very cautious. It took me a, a long time to iterate and develop uh, and test. Everything was uh, tested very thoroughly. And what I would say, we've just recently, you know, I, we've sold over 2,000 of them. We've helped lots of people. So it's no longer, in my mind, uh, a beta or a project. It's actually now a product. And so uh, the next step is actually get some you know, visibility for it. It's been largely word of mouth. We haven't really done uh, a lot of advertising. So uh, the next stage is getting through this pandemic so I can go out and uh, yeah. uh, work hand in hand with, uh, with professionals. And that's, you know, I miss that most of all right now. It's the, the greatest fulfillment I get is when I go find, you know, work with the people who need this. And instead of having their eyes cast like six inches in front of their feet, looking down, their head bolts back, their eyes look out in the horizon because they see a new vision for their future. This so I, I want to keep doing that. And this pandemic has slowed me down a bit. Well, you know. I know you started this because you thought of the veterans, okay? And obviously, there are so many of them that need this. But I'm thinking about also people as, as they age, it makes no difference where they are in that age process. Like I said in the beginning, I have a niece who has MS and has been using a walker. Um, and she feels a little clumsy with it. Um, but this would give her that chance to stand straight and, you know, oh be, my gosh, you know, be but, back but, in the realm of uh, it, I just started working on the, I mean, the majority of people that need this, there's about probably 35 million Americans that, that are, that are uh, losing the opportunity for <laughs> the, the best life they can because they have a mobility issue. Uh -huh. The majority of them are seniors. See, yeah. my question then is, it's obvious a life changer. This is obvious. I am visualizing right now in my mind a planet where everybody is walking oh, or yeah. flying or dancing or whatever. You are there. You have done this. Now, how is it going to be executed? How is every, for example, I have a colleague who just had a very sad experience. She's a cyclist, professional cyclist, and her partner is. He didn't see a rock that was there. He went over, he's now in the hospital, and he's a paraplegic. He broke his spine. And it's so sad to hear the steps that she's telling me if he lives through it. Will, will the life changer, the life glider, <laughs> Yes help somebody like this too i imagine well, well one of the, the early places i started with was with paraplegics because I, I wanted to go with the most start with the most difficult cases because if we can solve some of those yes, yes. Uh, and then we can pro we can solve the easier ones you know so uh, there's a really good story of a, a cowboy named uh, casey terribolini mm -hmm. had a horrible accident as he was winning a horsemanship competition he actually broke his neck and he had uh, one ounce of pinch pressure between his thumb and index finger. And he worked like crazy. They gave him the op option to say, well, you can be a paraplegic in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. 
because that's most likely the result no matter what you do. Or, you know, if you, if you really try hard, maybe, maybe you can get back to your peak. Uh, so uh, I, I worked with him shortly after he had gone through maybe four or five years of rehab. And I'll tell you, the most amazing people are the people that have this determination to restore their lives. And uh, Casey uh, used the life guider. It helped him restore his capability to, to go uh, take care of his horses. He's back riding competitively nice. in competitions. Oh, and, unbelievable. And what about Chris Reeves? Remember Chris Reeves? Yeah, oh my gosh, yes. He, so, he would have benefited from, from your uh, life glider. The, the heartbreaking stories are the, are the uh, paraplegics that after five years of rehab, they realize, what's the use? I'm still going to be... I know. Uh, I'm still going to not have my balance. I still gonna, I have to use one of these silly walking tools and I'm embarrassed by that. And uh, I'll just use a wheelchair. There was been nothing to intervene in that period after they go through all this work. Right. And make them feel like they can restore themselves further to upright. Because there is something about meeting people eye to eye, uh, you know, okay. face to face, having your hands available to yeah. serve people, to serve yourself, remain independent. And so, yeah, there's. There's yeah. a tremendous opportunity uh, using this device and some augmentation and maybe some other things that would overcome some of the other things beyond just the balance. Are, are the life gliders make on demand or do you have them already in a warehouse somewhere? <laughs> yeah, we, we have a warehouse. We start out pretty slow and then we've, and we've increased, increased the quantity and uh, we have them. Uh, available through our website at uh, mylifeglider.com. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, and we're making more. So uh, <laughs> we're going to get another uh, large quantity, hopefully, knock on wood, uh, you know, in the new, new year. And then I'll be able to get out and work with all these wonderful people that absolutely. are so deserving of uh, oh, having this device. Well, we need to get you on Shark Tank. I, I mean. You know, oh. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a pretty introverted person, and uh, I don't like to. He needs to go. Right. I think the life glider on Shark Tank by yes. itself, <laughs> with some of the people that have these dramatic results, might be interesting. But so, you know, as I'm listening, yeah, as I'm listening to you, I'm realizing so many people, young, you know, middle age, older, can can do so much with this. Um, during the afternoon when in between shows, I have the TV running in here and they're constantly showing uh, St. Luke's Hospital and these oh, yeah. children. And I think if these children had something like this, they would be part yeah. and parcel of well, their community. I, I have my little uh, prototype of the life glider that goes down to three-year-old size. How oh, wonderful. Uh, for that reason, because it's one thing when you're older and you've uh, had a, a full, rich life. Right. Uh, it's so sad when you when you see the children because when they're when they're really small, they don't know that they're different than somebody else. And then what happens is they gradually fall behind. They start to realize I don't I don't have the same capabilities as others, and that light that's in their eyes diminishes. And it's really hard to turn it back on. And so, you know, my goal is to, to serve everybody that has a, a walking aid and a walking uh, aid need. And, you know, I, this is the first product. I mean, I, I look at this as like uh, eyeglasses. Now, I, I wear eyeglasses. And somebody invented this clever device hundreds of years ago, I guess. And I'm not disabled, but without eyeglasses, <laughs> I'd be pretty disabled. My future would be very diminished compared to what it has been. I've had a really rich, wonderful life, and I'm trying my best to, to give other people a better opportunity to do that. Wonderful. Um, so that's what we want to do with helping people walk. And so to me, asking how do we do this, it's like everybody knows somebody who needs some help. If everybody would adopt one person every year and help them, get back on their feet, rejoining life, getting confident and fit again, 
to be able to do all those things that they need to be remaining independent, uh, feeling capable, uh, and bringing joy back to their lives. That's what this is all about. This is about trying to create a new type of community because it's going to require everybody's help. We can't rely on the government per se. We, we can't rely on the medical professionals. They're all really busy doing other things. And this is something that I think we need to invite others to, to join together to form this community to help each other uh, yeah. really come back to life. Well, Robert, I want to make an offer to you, okay? And I've done this to many of Barbara's um, guests on this program. You have something so enriching. Oh. And you have people who are using it and benefiting by it. So I want you to consider that you and I work together to do a regular podcast, but having the people who are using this, okay, to come on with themselves, their family members, and talk about how this works for them. Because that, when we hear perfect. them, <laughs> when we hear them, we're going to believe them as much as I'm yeah. believing you. It, yeah. This is this is not about me. This is about them. And so that's where I want the attention to go. I understand. But you yeah. you put it together for them. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And I just, as I'm listening, I'm thinking, this is about humanity. This is life changing. So why, why aren't they? Why isn't everyone? Maybe they are. Banging your door down, banging your door down, standing in lines around the world wanting to walk and stand. That will happen, I'm sure. But the transition from inventing this to that moment, there's a journey there, a path. How does that happen? Yes, word of mouth, word of mouth. As an author, I know how word of mouth is so important for selling my books. That's minuscule compared to what you're doing. How, how is this transition going to occur for you? I mean, you should be on 60 Minutes. You should be on the cover of Time, people, all those things. And, and, and what Karen just said, Definitely people are watching and listening, but what well, is the next step for you? The best thing is everybody who recognizes that we can do so much for so many people says, I want to see this happen too. This is not Rob Karlovich's project. This is my project. That's, this is the project of uh, community. This is something that I'm going to see happen and I want to jump in and do what I can. It, it's more than me. And I'm, like I said, I'm an introvert. I, uh, I'm very intimidated by all this. It takes me quite a bit to uh, have the courage actually to come on to something like this and I, do this. But you know, um, you know, Einstein was too. And I always say people who are really creating something important are very much like that. But I'm interested in getting it out there. I would like to tell my friend who's crying every day, don't worry, if Reggie pulls through, he'll be able to get a life lighter. That's my next question. Yes. How would somebody go about that? And is there great cost involved at this point? Uh, my, my goal ultimately is to have this affordable so that everybody can have it. And that the uh, insurance and Medicare recognize how much pain and suffering and future medical costs this can spare all of us. The, so, uh, you know, I've designed this to try to drive all the costs out. It's still a little bit of a hurdle for a lot of people because so many people uh, are limited in their funds. But the goal is to make this uh, ubiquitous and affordable and available. And uh, we got a little work to do on that. Um, but I have confidence we'll get there. Somebody so, could be behind it. What do you call it? Underwriting it. And just like insurance. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of this is out of, you know, my wife's been funding me basically to do this. Uh, it's our own personal finances. We've got investors, some, of course, but uh, this has been a, a, a personal, personal mission. We, you know, I don't have access to, 
all the right kinds of people that can actually really help accelerate this. And so if you know some of those people and you can introduce me, I will really Karen, welcome that. Karen's <laughs> offer to you right now, I would take because she will, we will get the people on here. I already know of two guests. I do too. Get, what would be have on your show? Here, and we need yes. to see, uh, Rob, a picture. Oh, can we yes. see? A life glider on the. I'm actually, I'm actually standing in one right now. What? Okay. <laughs> I, I found it so helpful for me because I, I would set, spent my entire career sitting, so I had chronic back pain. Uh huh. Because of the excess sitting, so I would in early days I try to get some visibility to go to some events and I'd stand in the this thing all day long and I'd, at the end of the event and say, "How are your feet feeling?" And they'd say, I'm exhausted. I've, I've been walking for two hours. And they said, well, I've been in this for eight hours straight. And I could go run a half a marathon. And all of a sudden, I realized, wow, You're pretty you. significant. So I went home, and I converted my home office to a stand-up office. And, uh, and it just put me in the right posture again. It so, corrected my posture. So I, what you just said, there's a whole other market for it. Because there oh, are a lot of us who, like myself, mm -hmm. I sit at my desk all day long. And do and do it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I my can mother, raise my desk up. Yeah. My mother-in-law lives with us, and she saw that. She said, I'd like to stand more because I hate sitting all day. So I built a standing chair for her. Oh and so every day she spends a couple extra hours standing and just doing whatever she's doing at the counter in the kitchen or wherever. I think uh, that is so amazing. That's that's all. There's, there's a lot of applications of what I've learned here, and that when I when I first discovered it, I uh, I thought I opened a door that nobody had gone through, and it was like, wow, this is there's a there's a lot of things we can do. Absolutely. And Hemingway wrote all his novels standing up because he never wanted to sit down, you well, know. And and it works differently when you're standing than when you're sitting. My platform is to fight ageism. And as an 84-year-old woman who wants to be a movie star um, I, and doesn't believe in age, uh, I notice that a lot of people who are, uh, let's say, 60 plus, who, who are sitting all day like I am and working, you do get that, you know, they call it the, the hump kind of thing. And I really don't want that. And I'm thinking... Yeah. You kick that whole market just for ages of, I'm so tired of hearing about get rid of lines and, you know, get, no, you know, cut your face, <laughs> and your face and all that. I think it looks horrible and it is horrible. Mutilate. My, my this, goal is to die healthy. <laughs> this is really a Absolutely. healthy affirmation as well as a lifesaver. I think you're one of those, um, if I may say so without embarrassing you, I, I think you're one of those geniuses who is contributing to this planet, and it will go down in history, I'm sure, but you're in that stage of, of getting it out there, just like yeah. Einstein's took a long time to get the theory of relativity out there. He went through a lot, you know, then once it gets out there, so anything that I can do and Karen and we can do to help you get, you have a, a free ticket here. <laughs> That's great. I'll take you up on that. I need all the help I can get, you know? So uh, I, I I'm just, just a single person trying to, trying to do something that uh, is useful for, for people. Well, well kudos to your wife. I mean, for your spouse to be, you know, really backing you on this. She saw the good in it. Um, and sometimes we don't have that support. So that's, we're yeah. very grateful for that. Uh, honestly, for the first few years, she had no idea what I was doing, <laughs> and why I was doing it, but she believes in me. And that's, well, the six, that's I want to see the sticks you started with. That fascinates me. The sticks, I mean, yeah. this could be people want longevity. To me, purpose is longevity. But also physiologically, this could help their purpose. This could help longevity for people who are so fearful of age. Yeah. It's well, wonderful. As, as 
as exciting as the physical uh, improvements that people experience, it's even far more gratifying to see the psychological yes. uh, aspect of it. Because yes. as great as it is that they're up and walking, it's this whole new idea of what their future can be. That's yes. most exciting to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. So psychologically and sociologically, your how exciting for you because you're you must feel so excited about it as an inventor there's so it's so creative as well as changing humanity yeah I, i'm very excited about it uh i thought i was when i first realized that this whole area had been overlooked forever i was so excited to think that well you know uh Maybe I can actually make something that's, uh, you know, that sticks, that's Absolutely. worthwhile, that gives me reason to uh, get up in the morning. Well, how can people find you if they're interested in this? Uh, yeah, mylifeglider.com, www.mylifeglider.com. Uh, okay, mylifeglider.com. And we'll yeah. make sure that I put that in the description of today's show. Yeah. Um, and off you know offline you and i can have a conversation because i'd like this to keep growing oh yes uh, absolutely yeah i can't wait to tell i will also when i get this is on youtube as we talk right karen yes. so when karen sends the link of the show and to you too i'm going to be sending this link to everyone i can and um i'll be in touch too um this is wonderful thank you so no, much thank you so much i'm so much i'm uh, so glad to meet you guys and uh, excited that you're part of the team now absolutely an honor and listeners tell everybody about this everybody and when you see this show pass it on to everyone this is really important and by the way i'll just give a little a little clink plug um um you can find my latest novel in all bookstores and on Amazon. It's titled Love Sometimes, and the Audible just was released. And all my books on barbarosebrooker.com. But what I want to say even more importantly than that is um, the coming Age March. I'm, I'm the founder of the first Age March, Age Magnificent in history it's going to be a virtual production in march and agemarch.org is in it's it's up you can join but the what new website will be up in a week or two so watch for that everyone at every age is age magnificent and there is no end to possibilities as our guest told us today absolutely so thank you very much uh, Karen, wonderful being with you and wonderful meeting you, Rob. And everyone stay safe. Absolutely. Have a Thank great you. day, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye-bye now. Bye.